This one also has a bad rear end pulley on it. From what I'm being told by the seller, the center of the pulley is stripped out. This is a used one that I've got to put back on it. If this is something you want to know more about, welcome to the Bald Eagle 242 YouTube channel. You can do this without completely removing these rear fenders, but quite honestly, pretty easy to remove this. You just pull your knob off for your deck adjustment. There is a bolt underneath here that holds down the front of this, one on each side. Got a nut on the bottom of it. Usually the pad will hold that down enough so you don't even have to take it up. Back here next to the seat, you've got a bolt here and a bolt here on this side. And you have to take your gas cap off to get it through this hole. This one here, somebody's already bypassed the seat safety switch. We get done, I'll hook this back up. You have to take that loose to get it off of here. This knob here, you may need to take a wrench and just back this nut down because this is like a jam nut that just jams onto this. And it makes it very hard to turn this without losing loosen that nut up. The nut on this is a 16 millimeter, which is loosen this up here, half a turn or so, and then this will screw right off. On some mowers, you can just pull these little rubber pads off these foot pedals and then fish this up around this and pull these out. On this one, it's almost impossible. So the best thing to do is just take these 10 millimeter bolts loose down here. Once you get all the nuts off these foot pedals, they'll just pull right out the top here. You can get them out of the way. Then we got the four nuts off of these bolts here that hold that foot pedal mounting bracket on underneath there. And I just took that down underneath here and just leave that hang there. That's pretty much the only thing that holds this floorboard and fender mechanism on here. We can pull this right off now. And don't forget to take your gas cap off. Oh! You might have got that wire for the seat is still going down through there. Get that out of there and it'll come right off. This little bottle here, it just kind of presses back into the gas tank. Just pull that out. I did have to take one bolt out. There's two bolts in each side. I took one bolt out of the top on each side and just loosened the bottom one up there so I could just swing that out of the way. Did the same thing on this side. Then when we get in here to this, I can't see this fan is loose. And the pulley's definitely loose, so we'll pull this nut off here and see what we got to work with here. One thing I noticed here when I started to take this off, this nut here is loose. I can actually turn that with my fingers. I haven't even had a wrench on that yet. And you can see all the metal down here, so I don't know if this wasn't tightened. This pulley looks newer, so I'd say this pulley has been replaced once before. It's likely this nut wasn't completely tightened down or somehow it's come loose. I'll get this off of here and then I'll show you a real easy way to get this belt off without screwing with any of the springs or anything underneath. If you have one of these old John Deere tractors or possibly a Simplicity tractor that has this Tough Torque K71 transmission in it, this transmission still brings about four to five hundred dollars on the used market. So just be aware of that if you're junking one of these things out, what these transmissions are still worth. One thing to look for if you've got one of these more desirable transmissions in your your John Deere tractor is just check to make sure that it actually has the five lug nuts around the outside. That is a good indication you have a good garden tractor transmission. I'll go ahead and zip this off here real quick and I'll show you how to get that belt off of there. This uh, fan does have a uh, like a nut shape that fits down over that pulley and that can be stripped out too so just check that when you pull your fan off. This fan still looks really good. To get this belt off reach underneath here you can see this pulley right there that's the one closest to your mounting bracket and stuff under there. If you're on the right side of this mower, you can reach underneath this with your right hand, pull that back, and then that takes your tension off there so you can pull that belt off with your left hand. Put your finger on the belt here, pull this tensioner back underneath here, and you can just walk that belt off of there. You can see on this pulley, there's not much spline left in that thing. It's definitely been run loose and just started wallowing the inside of that out. You can see the, the one I just took off compared to a, a good used one or a new one, there should be a spline inside of that pulley. Before I go any further here, I'm going to push this thing outside and pressure wash it off here. So when you see it next, it should be a little cleaner. Now we got this all cleaned up, be a little more fun to work on. I'll show you a couple other things to check while you're down in here. For one, your full line on this here is about up to that line right there. And it's good as long as it's between these two lines. That's your add line down there. And I would not recommend pulling this cap off as long as this is full because this is actually lower than this. This will be filled all the way to the top and it'll actually run out if you take that cap off. One other thing to check down in here 
this pull rod where you disengage your transmission to push it around when you're not running it. Check down in here and make sure that there is no debris or any sticks or anything stuck down in here. I've actually bought tractors that they said the transmission was bad on simply because something was jammed down in there. Right, one other thing I'll show you here on this pulley. This is part number AM124055 and these are available on Amazon and also Pro Parts Direct is a good place to buy stuff like All this. Alright, when we put this back on here, you don't really need to worry about putting that belt on it yet, but just slide that down on that shaft. And then we'll put our belt on next. We'll do that the same way I did before. We're just going to grab that pulley down there and pull it over towards the, you want to call it the passenger side of your mower, I guess, the right side. And then we'll come back here and put this belt back on the pulley before we put the fan on there. All right, and then to get this belt back on here, we'll do it the same way we did when we took it off. Just reach underneath here, pull the tension off of this tensioner underneath, and just kind of walk that around that pulley like that. And that should go on there with no problem. And clean this fan up a little bit. Make sure you put your washer back on there. And then we're gonna tighten this down. I don't know what the torque spec exactly is on this, but probably 21 to 25 foot-pounds. That is a lock nut, so it should stay on there if we get it tight. I can't believe that would have came loose if it was tight to start with. All right, and then we'll take the wrench and go ahead and tighten that down. And one thing, you see how that spins there? That's probably a good reason they didn't get this tightened all the way down last time. If they didn't take those fenders off, it's really hard to get enough torque on this or some way to lock that pulley in place. I don't usually recommend tightening bolts down with an impact wrench, but another option here is you can get a good impact wrench on here. Just make sure that's good and tight. I will show you a little bonus tip here too. If you ever have to replace this mechanism underneath for this tensioner, this is underneath this footboard here. You can't see this. But if you ever need to take that off, there's a snap ring right here, and then that drops that mechanism right out the bottom. So not part of this job, but just figured I'd show you that while we got this apart. Something else you should check while you've got this apart is check the condition of your fuel line here, because it's a good time to replace that if you have any kind of fuel line issues. Reassembles pretty much the same as what we did to take it apart, so I'm just gonna throw it back together here real quick and then we'll take it out for a test ride. We almost got done with this old girl before the rain started, but I did get this completed, did get the grass cut, and I think she's running really well. Hopefully you found some value in this video. If you've got a similar problem, hopefully that'll help you figure it out. When I got this thing, it had a severely cracked hood. I've got another video where I go in to show you how to repair these hoods. I mean, as you can see, this hood looks like brand new. That hood was literally in about 10 to 12 pieces when I bought this mower. I took two hoods and pieced it back together and then painted it. But if you'd like to see that video, I'll put a link to that right up here. Consider hitting that subscriber button. I've got a lot of other videos on these John Deere tractors and some stuff I think you'll find useful. Thanks for watching. Until next time.